so you're probably wondering, like, what the hell happened in 2018 Roblox, where 90% of games died due to a thing, a magical thing called filtering enabled? Well, I would like to say that it is a good change. It is that's a very bold claim. Well, filtering enabled is a good change because the basic definition of filtering enabled is that is the division between the server and the client. And to explain that, let's get the server script. Just go script. Let's get a client script. Now, this code will run in regard to the server, and this code will run in regard to your client. So we put that here in start player scripts. We run the server in the service perspective only, so this has no clients. This will run, and you will see this. But as soon as we get a client in, so we get a player in. Of course, the server will do its own thing, it will still run, but your client will be the only one to see this specific hello world. And then once you click, when you click that, it goes to the perspective of the server. And this to the to this perspective of your client. So that's basically the division. Now before 2018, before filtering enabled, the local script could literally just make any change they wanted to. So let's say they wanted to do wait five seconds then change clock time to one. Basically make it night. So let's say play. Let's wait five seconds. And then it'll turn night. Now if you go to the server if you go to the perspective of a server, you see that it's still day because you only made a change in the client that specific client script. Now, before filtering enabled, the server will also be set to night because there are literally no restrictions. It's like the US-Mexico border. Like before a certain point, like Mexicans should just, like, should just like enter whatever you want. Now it's a little more like defined. I mean, okay, maybe it's not a good idea to use the US-Mexico border as an example, but you see, you, you get the point. The client can change anything they wanted, big security issue big exploits you can see it in a bunch of videos back in like 2016 2017 that's basically the division between filter enabled but how do you communicate to the server from a client so let's say you want to relay some important information as a client to the server which they can use but that's where we get into remotes these stuff so you get a remote event which is basically like your little, um, your little carry pigeon, your little middleman. We get server case storage. If serve the storage, and then let's make this little. Let's get this little remote, and then if you want to call something, you want to send information. Fire server. This fires to the server. And let's say you want to send a number. Let's send five. And then let's make a service script here. Let's also get the ripple event. But this time, since the server is in the receiving end, you're going to make a function. Function event. Let's call it event. Then re remote event on server event. It just says it here. I'm not sure if you see that, but connect. So we're connecting that function to this one. And then since we have a little number here, we're gonna make the variable here. And then let's just say we put that number. So that basically means local script gets to number five, connects it to the server, and then it'll print five in regards to the server. So once we run that, you see, oh, I forgot to mention, um, the first variable is always the player, so make sure you, you make that clear. So the first variable, when you're transferring information from the client to the server, is always going to be the player. Because, you know, you got to know where, it's, where it comes from. So here it prints 5 from the server, perfectly. And that's basically from client to server, but if you want to do server to client, same exact thing, just opposite ends. So let's say we got our E. We're gonna do fire client. 
or all clients. So do all clients. Do five. And then RE the function event here. RE on client event connect event. And then this time it's just like the number because there's no variable for the player. Just do print number. That's because the client already knows who we are, so no need for that. As you can see here. Oops, not haven't done that correctly. Yeah, you gotta make sure that this runs while this is loaded. So let's make a little wait here. Cause sometimes when you run this, this will be active yet, because it takes this takes a little longer to load. So we gotta make a little wait here. Just wait for your customs. We got the five here in our client from the server. Fresh from the server ovens. And that's basically from server to client. And yeah, that's basically the way how you communicate from both ends of the game. From server to client, client to server. Okay, so basically remote functions. They basically just yield. And there's all, they also have different language. You might want to see the, the wiki for that. Remote events. Just show that. And then we got the division between local script and service scripts. And you now know why filter enabled exists. So that nothing like this ever happens again. Of course there are like bypasses. That's basically like all the modern bypasses too. Like they try to take advantage of remote events or basically anything that hasn't like been secured yet. So they can still control as a client. So that's why that's really important to cover. But yeah, that's basically it. Thank you.